Hey, <laughs> how's it going, man? What's going on, my guy? What's going on? Oh, man, you know, it's another day here. Another nice starting off Wednesday. Right, right, right. Home, or Monday, man. I mean. Um, yeah, I can't even keep the day straight. Yeah, you hustling, man. You hustling. You on hustling. Yeah. We don't know what day it is. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, just I want to say thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, we were just listening to uh, Yeah with the Yeah here, and uh, appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. That song, that song is uh, is great. I mean, the beat goes hard on that. It's it's a uh, it's a real good song. It's a and it's the time to have some some music right. that you can just kind of vibe out to, and it's it's real right. great to see. Right. I just feel like people still need that that club feel, even if you're at the crib, just chilling. <laughs> You know? Yep, turn the house into the crib, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things I like to do with a with a new artist that's on our platform for the first time is just to kind of give an introduction to your life and your music. Um, but you know, music wasn't really the first path for you. So, can you talk a little bit about um, you know wanting to be a football star and growing up and being a Spartan? I mean, I was. Uh, I was my school mascot too, the Luxembourg Casco Spartans. All right. So, uh, so I, I resonate with that a little bit. But what was it like, uh, you know, growing up, and and when did kind of music become um, more of what you were looking to do? I mean, it was just like uh, when you grow when you're growing up, you know, you just have avenues that you're trying to take, you know, to become successful, and uh, you give it your all, whatever you're doing, right? So. At one point in time, I was playing football, and that's what I was doing. I was giving it my all. And, like, just like this rap shit, I was trying to be the best no matter what. So it didn't work out for me, but it taught me a lot of things, like principles and values and shit that I took. And and I use them still today, just from just, like, being sociable, being able to be around people. You're in the locker room full of, full of music around you. So, you know, you learn it. So, I mean, but... And it, it didn't work out for me, but so I just, you know, chose music because it's another form, just another avenue to be successful or be rich or just, just be, you know. And I ain't trying to, trying to be rich. It's like a cause and bitches, but just right. take care of my family, man. You know? Right. So it's just an avenue that I'm taking and I'm actually doing good at it. So I'm going to, you know, stick with it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and that's true. The, the one thing that, uh, you know, I've learned in life is, Whatever you're gonna do, if you're not going at it full bore, like you're you're just you're not giving yourself the chance to do it. I mean, growing up, I played hockey; that was my sport of choice, and so uh, you know that was <laughs> not the teeth out. Y'all not the teeth out and shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm lucky. I got them all left, but um, but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's one of those things where it, it didn't work out for me either. But then I went into into physics actually after school, so that's what I went to school for, but. Right. Um, seeing seeing you talk about that, the one thing that I had really liked when I was doing a little bit of reading up on you was you talked about how your your mom kind of instilled that work ethic in you. All right. And it's something that it brings me back to a talk that I had had with um, there's a, a local artist here who was around in like the 2000s, passed away in 2010, named Idea, and he used to tell or his mom told me in a in an interview that she made sure. Whatever he did, he stuck with it for at least a year. So she right. said, you can do whatever you want, but you're going to be in it for a year, and then you can decide if you like it or not after that. So right, right, right. That's so, cool. That's dope. Yeah, and so how was it how, – how do you feel that that kind of um, – you know, with what your mom really pushed you to do, how do you think that has, you know, influenced your work style now? I mean, my, my mom was pretty much – she was always on the go. She always had to be at work. So she didn't have much time to really – to really focus on like what I was doing and shit, so she might pop her head in and be like, "You better get off your ass and do something." <laughs> I ain't got any, I ain't gonna be telling you. I ain't gonna be on your ass, and then she might leave and go to work for the day. You know what I'm saying? And that would just teach me responsibility, just to get off my ass and, and be on my shit, just by myself and not depend on nothing. And just watching her go to work every day, just like shit. Well, I need to go to work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> by <a> certain age. <laughs> Until I find out, like, nah, I really don't want to work. Like, a job ain't right. for me. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I ain't saying a job ain't for me. Like, shit, if I have to, I'll go back and give me a job. It's anything to take care of my babies, but I don't prefer, you know? Right, right. <laughs> right, and being able to do something that you love is really, uh, right. is really special, too. Right, right. So, I mean, 
that and just watching her every day just go to work, it just like made me like fuck that. I gotta have something. Like I don't want to see my mom work for the rest of her life. Absolutely. So, that kind of motivated me just to you know get off my head. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's and that's it's great to see that. And you you also um, you know I wanted to talk about a lot of the different influences that you brought into your life, you know, um, with your dad being from Cape Verde and, and that being just a cultural mixing ground there as well and bringing that influence to you along with living in, in Huntsville, you know, living in Alabama, that's like, it's all these things that you have, all these different cultural backgrounds to you and how do you feel like that has kind of uh, influenced, do you, feel, do you feel one specific one has influenced your music a lot or do you feel like Yo, know, all of it has just kind of came together. Nah, to me, it's pretty cool. It's like, you know, some people are just from up north or some people are just from down south or out west. You know, I'm just blessed to be from both, really. Like, I live my life in both. But majority of my life, I've been in the south. So it's like, I'm, I'm majority southern, but i just been blessed to, you know, live both like and see both sides of the fence. So it's like. I would prefer to live in the South any day, but that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I know I wasn't real close with my dad, but I knew him, and you know, we spoke, we we kept in contact. But so I can't really say like he just like influenced me in any way, but he did. Like when I did go around, he told me things that you know put good seeds in my head. But that's about it. Yeah. So. So and and that is that is important too. One of the one of the things I, I always like to talk about when it comes to uh, when it comes to culture is music. But the other thing I really like to talk about is food. So which one do you think's got the better food? Like where would you rather eat from? You eat down south, or you think uh, eating over there? I mean, I would probably would eat up north because it's like so much. It's so many different like ethnicity ethnicity ethnicity. So it's like. Shit, you can eat any kind of food. Like in the South, it's really just like soul food or pizza, Chinese food, or some shit like that. You know, I mean, like up north. I mean, they got way more shit to eat up there. Period. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, um, you know, not not only just the the cultural influences that you had, but you had a lot of musical influences growing up as well. So, um, you know, what's what's uh. With, with like such a diverse musical category growing up, do you feel that any one genre kind of influenced you more in your music, or do you feel that like you pull from a lot of different genres when you go into the studio? I think I just pull from a lot of different shit. It's like I used to take rides from Huntsville, Alabama to Boston. And you know, I don't know if you know, it's like eighteen hours. That's a <laughs> that's a trip. <laughs> when you a kid, you ain't got no control over the radio, so you just listen to whatever the fuck they listen to. So. <laughs> Like, back then, I was hating it. But it's like, now, you know, I got so many. It's like I'm a jukebox or something. It's like, I got so many songs to just tweak up and listen to. Like, <laughs> yeah, I might have hated that song, but I'm going to make it the way I would. Right. Like, yeah, I kind of use that shit. So it's, I pull from everywhere. Okay. And, and what's, uh, what's one song that nobody would realize that you know, like, every word to a song? Like, what's the one, like, off-the-wall song that, like, Nobody would guess you knew every word, dude. Uh, Rick James, Super Free. <laughs> That's my guy, Rick. Rick is my guy. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Rick is my guy. Yeah, so uh, you, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, your music now that you're putting out. Because you had, um, you know, it probably was about four years ago when you first linked up with Zaytoven. Um, and you were doing projects back then. But you didn't really fully go into it. I think this time you were you were talking about your your diving a little bit heavier into it because you were still um, kind of just in. I don't want to say a bunch of different directions or anything, but you just weren't fully jumping into into rap at that time. So yeah. how did you link up initially with Zay? I mean, I just I think uh, just linked up with Zay. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? He just linked back up to me. Like, man, come on, move. I need you. You know, and I was just like, I was like, you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. And, and then we here right now. So, you know, but originally I met him a long time ago through a, a 
another individual, uh, Brett, when he came, uh, yeah. he used to throw parties. Me and him used to do music together, do a few mixtapes and all that. But he would bring Zay, and uh, I would just get a few beats from him, and he would go back home with the songs and be like, man, you hard. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, but I really didn't believe in myself. Like, yeah, that shit ain't hard, for real. You know what right. I'm saying? But if, after a while, it's just more of a confidence thing. I just was like, fuck it. I don't even care if nobody likes it or not. Like, I like it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's that's a that's a big step, I think, in it is is going from uh, you. It, it doesn't matter what a lot of times what other people will tell you. I'm I'm a photographer, and I've had people tell you, you know like that works great. But until you really yeah. start to be like, you know, what, I'm I, now I feel good about this. That's right. when you can start to really yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to feel good about what you're doing before <laughs> right. anybody else does. So I, I I didn't feel good about it for a while. I just was shy, like. Nah, man, nah. Uh. And then it's like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So then how did it come about this time? You were saying, you know, he just kind of got back in contact with you. and yeah, how I was just laying in the bed, man, you know. And he, he hit me like, well, what you doing? I'm like, I'm just chilling. He's like, man, I, let's just do it, man. What, 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 what we doing? <laughs> and he's like, when somebody like they call you, like, you know, you got to get up. Like, fuck it, let's do it. And I got on it from right there. Yeah, and 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 speak a little bit about that because you know you're right. There's there's your own belief in yourself, but there's something to be said about getting a co-sign from somebody like Zay, who when he's reaching out to you saying like, "Hey, we got to do this," like that's got to be definitely a confidence boost. So what was it like, you know, from that side? Of it? I mean, it's it's some it's it's amazing. It's kind of like easy to work with him. It's just like. His beats come with pretty much words on them. You just got to listen to them and just fill the gaps. That's pretty much it. It's just like, it's easy. So sure. It's just, it's just a blessing, you know, especially for somebody who he got so much going on. You know, be like, they take some time out, be like, yeah, man, I still, I need you. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a blessing. Yeah, and that's great. And that and to bring that to, yeah, with the, yeah, I mean, if this song is, it's like you said, it's, it doesn't like there's a lot of heavy things going on in the world right now, but to be able to bring this and have people have this type of song in their in their arsenal to listen to during the summertime when things are starting to open back up a little bit and people are starting to, you know, be able to spend some time with family or they're making a you know, having a party at the crib and anything else. So I think it's great. And so how how did you go about this song, like you said? You know, his beats just kind of speak to you, but was there anything different about this one and in in really the whole project that you guys are putting out? Uh, I think we lost you first. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just sitting in the studio and just talking, you know, your regular regular lingo that we use every day. And then my one of my homeboys was like, man, you might need to, you know, try that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like yeah. I put it on there, and it sounded good. It's like fuck it, we ran it. Absolutely, and I think that's kind of a neat way to to introduce. I mean, a lot of new language has been introduced through music, or just like you know things that a lot of people are just like yeah. You know, when you hear the backstory, it's it's funny to me to hear the backstory on a lot of different songs, <laughs> and it and it stems a lot from the same type of thing where guys are like yeah, it's just something I've said for a while, yeah. and yeah. and then it just kind of. Came together. I mean, I'm the easiest songs, and it'd be like, that's a song that I really don't even prefer, but it's like, fuck it. Right. Everybody else like it. I like it. Whatever. Absolutely. <laughs> well, hey, I want to I wanna jump into now the uh, kind of the, the heart of what up, uh, what the quarantine questions is, which is just some kind of rapid fire questions um, that are just having to deal with, you know, the new life in quarantine and everybody, you know, catching up with people, seeing what, what their lives are like in, in lockdown here. So, uh, so what is one artist that's heavily been on your playlist during, uh, during quarantine? Oh, uh, heavy on my, pay my playlist. I'm probably on that baby face Ray right now. You know? That's solid. And which, which track do you got playing the most? Uh, I like a shot. A shot. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna have to check it. Um, right. Okay, so the second question I have, you know, being in quarantine, it kind of for, it, it kind of forces you to be alone a little bit more. You know, you're with yourself a little bit more. 
Um, and for me personally, like I, I've lived alone for four years and now, now I'm back living with somebody, but um, you know that when you live alone for so long, uh, you, you tend to start doing a little bit of weirder things. Yeah. Uh, so for me, what I've noticed is I, I used to like, I make a lot of weird faces. Like if I'm, if I'm rapping, I'll catch myself and I'll just like catch myself singing a song and I'm making some odd face. So what's something that you've like caught yourself doing where you thought like, man, what, what am I really doing right now? Oh, probably staring in the refrigerator. Not <laughs> doing shit. You know, just not warm shit. Just looking in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay in that fridge, boy. We burn that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that actually, it's funny. That brings us into the third question here, which is, uh, you know, diets tend to be a big part of people's lives early in the year. You know, leading into like that, uh, you know, like the summer months where everybody's trying to get into the best shape before they're going outside and hanging out with people. Um, but quarantine kind of just threw that out the window. Um, so what's, what's one thing during this that you've either overeaten or that like you just can't get enough of? Lamb chops from Connors. Man, I'm, I'm, we be killing them motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we've been eating a, a deep fried fucking, a deep fried, uh, lobster tail. Deep? I don't think I've had that before. Yeah, that bitch pretty good. It's here. <laughs> It's his. You might need to come down here and try it. It's his. I'll tell you what. I I definitely – so I, I recently just got over my fear of flying. And, and like I was telling you, one of the biggest things for me is always when I travel, I want to try new foods. So if I come down south, like that's one of the biggest reasons why I want to go down south is because the food that – I've seen down there, like, yeah. there's a lot of good soul and fried foods down there. Right, right, right. You need a little soul food in your life, right. always. Like, it's good to have a lot of variety. Like, you know, up north and every place, all them other places, they got a lot of variety. But you need some soul every now and then. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're up in – I'm up in Minnesota here. So, uh, you know, you can find it. It's a little bit harder to find uh, here. But you can definitely yeah, find some. Uh, Chinese barbecue. Which uh, which spot is that? I don't know. I was watching it on TV. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some. There's been some really cool places that I've seen. Even just like watching, uh, watching like Food Network. I watch so much Food Network, and I'll hear about some spot, and I'll be like, "Oh man, that's like ten minutes from me." Like I'm gonna go check that yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, you might need to check that out. Yeah. Well, hey, next time you're up here, I'll bring you to some of my favorite spots. And when I come down there, we'll. <laughs> a little some good spots. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Um, so the the next question, you know, like we talked a little bit about, you know, 2020 has been pretty stressful. I think a lot of people will say it's the most stressful year they've ever had. Um, and, you know, we still have so much going on, the election coming up, everything. So what's one thing that you found, though, that enables you to kind of decompress and de-stress and kind of recharge yourself? Uh, I think it's important. It's just important. Like one thing I didn't find is my relationship. Just I didn't been praying more. Just had a little more time to just focus and you know have a better relationship with a higher power. Right now, that's probably what everybody needs. You know, that's all I can recommend for anybody. Absolutely, I think. I mean, for me personally, it's been similar. I mean, not probably not the same religious views and everything, but we don't really, like. I'm not trying to get into any of that talk either. Yeah, but like, nah, nah, that, nah. And, I, and right. I'm not telling right. nobody to go to church every right. day. Right, no, no. I, but, you know, yeah, you're, like, what you're talking like, about being more spiritual and being more intertwined with whatever your beliefs are, I think, right, is right. very important. Uh, yeah, in whatever perspective. you believe in, whatever it is, it's just giving you more time. Like, we'd be so much on the go. And, you know, sometimes you don't focus on the things you might need to. And it's like now you're in the house, you got all the time in the world to. Yep. And that, that, I was just talking to a friend of mine about, you know, I had recently, uh, my parents, I grew up on a farm and my parents still, you know, garden a lot. We had beef cattle and stuff. And right, right. so, so my parents dropped off um, a bunch of like tomato plants and, and herbs and stuff like that. So now my patio, I got more plants and just, just you that ready? feeling of connecting back and like growing. You ready? Stuff is, you ready? Yeah, it's, you ready? Right, right. I'm, in case it all, in case it all goes down, I, I, you know, I still got my, I got my vegetation there. Right, right. You good? You good? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, 
So the last the last question I have for you here is, you know, is, is society starting to slowly reopen? We're seeing it in certain spots in the nation. Um, what's one thing that you just can't wait to re-enter the world? Uh, I really don't know. Just restaurants, certain restaurants. Like, there's still certain restaurants that I used to love to go to that ain't open yet. It's just like around my way. Now, they might be open everywhere else, but and it's just like that shit killing me. <laughs> so that besides that uh pretty much nothing Cause i didn't really go out and you know socialize with too much anyway so it's like right <laughs> yeah and it's it's true i mean even even the restaurants that i'm still able to get food from there's there's part of me that like took for granted going out to somewhere to eat yeah. i didn't really realize how much i enjoyed being at a restaurant until like i'm eating at home every bored. night you might just be bored one night. You just want to go to the bar and sit down. And right. <laughs> right. Watch the game. You know, have yeah. a beer at the bar. Sports, especially. Yeah. That's killing me right now. I hope I hope the NFL makes it. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if they don't do fans, as long as I can like watch something on TV, watch like new sports, I think I'll be I'll be able to handle that. <laughs> yeah, man. We need LeBron, man. We need him. <sighs> no kidding. Yeah, and he's he's uh he's graying up in quarantine. Grew that beard out. You see, his, he's getting a little gray there. Oh, I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. Yeah, he just some workout pictures came out, and I was like, man, everybody's everybody's got the gray. You didn't you didn't see it before quarantine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So the last last thing I kind of want to do here is is open it up to you. Um, just let you kind of tell everybody, you know, what you got going on, what's coming up. Um, just kind of speak to everybody on, on whatever you want to tell them. Man, well, I'm just at your head, man. You know, I'm just coming with them bangers every week. We're going to keep dropping them, shoot videos, you know, appearances, shows, anything, everywhere I can show my face. I'm there. You know, we're trying to get it. Yeah, with the yeah, putting pain where it ain't. Perfect, man. Well, hey, I, I also wanted to say just, you know, thanks again for sitting down with us. It was really cool to, to talk to you, get to know you a little bit more. Um, I hope sure. everybody enjoyed the set here. And, you know, I'm glad things are at least going well down there and we can start to you know open up, get a little bit of get a little bit of fun back in the life as well. Hopefully. Hopefully yeah. soon, man. Absolutely, we, man. We need a little sun. Yeah. We yeah fun in the sun. We've been getting sun, just no fun. Absolutely, man. I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's crazy. And and where you know, are you uh are you close to any water? Like do you I know Huntsville is a little bit more landlocked, but you have yeah, the, uh, closest, the closest water we uh, I'll be shooting to is like Destin, Florida, or like okay. Panama, Panama, right there, Pensacola, all that. It's, it's like six hours. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. We're land of the lakes here, so we got plenty of lakes all over the place. Yeah, but yeah, y'all got lakes everywhere. <laughs> but we get them for three months out of the year, so <laughs> take yeah, them when you can. Man. Minnesota's a, a nice place. I, yeah, I've exactly. never been yet. I want to come. Well, hey, uh, if you ever get the chance to get up here, um, like I say, you can always hit us up, and I'll find the best food I can in town, and Man, we'll, let's do it. we'll have, have a good time. Man, let's do it. Let's do it. It's right up my head. All right, man. Well, hey, have a good night, and uh, like I said, it was good, good catching up with you. All right, man. Appreciate you having me.